This is the second video for section 3.4 on barcodes. In this lecture, I'll be talking about UPC barcodes. So we've already talked about UPC codes in terms of the numbers. So we know that this 12 digit number that we see at the bottom of the code here, we understand how the different pieces of that code represent the object that's being scanned and how the check digit system works. But how is this pattern of light and dark bars related to that 12 digit number? Well, the bars actually represent those digits in a way that can be read by scanners, such as those in the supermarket. So it turns out that computers have an easier time of reading patterns of light and dark than they do about reading the numerals that our human eyes are better at reading. So when you first look at a UPC code, your initial thought might be that there are some thick black bars and some thin black bars, and there are some wide white spaces and some narrow white spaces, and it might seem a little haphazard. But as we zoom in on the barcode, what we actually are looking at is equally spaced patterns of light and dark. So this wide white space that we see here is actually three light spaces. And then this thick black bar here is actually two dark spaces. So we're going to convert this into a pattern of zeros and ones. So each light bar represents, is represented by a zero and each dark bar is represented by a one. So in fact, this entire barcode is actually a big long sequence of zeros and ones. Similar to the PostNet code that we talked about in the previous lecture, a UPC barcode has features that help a scanner read it without errors. So there are barcodes at the beginning and end, and there are other features that allow the scanner to read the code even if it's a different size or if the code is being held upside down. So these are all good features. Again, if you imagine if you're at the grocery store, you're not always holding the objects that you're scanning in the exact same orientation. So here's how the code breaks down. So the guard patterns at the beginning and end of every UPC code is just a 101. And again, what I mean by that, what I mean by 101 is a single dark bar followed by a single light space followed by a single dark bar. So you'll see that at the beginning of each code and you'll see that same thing at the end of each code. And then after the 101, you have the first six digits of the code and each digit is going to be represented by seven bars. And we'll get to that in the next slide. And then in the middle of the code is a 01010. So again, that's going to be a light bar, a dark bar, a light bar, a dark bar, and then a light bar. And that's always going to be in the middle of every UPC code, and it separates the left-hand side from the right-hand side. And then we have the last six digits of a code. Remember, a UPC code is 12 total digits, including a check digit. And then finally, at the end of the code, as we said, it ends in a 101. Now, this is a binary code. So binary just means that there's two options for each digit. In this case, we only have zeros and ones representing light and dark. The PostNet code is also a binary code because, again, each bar there had two options, tall and short. And it turns out that binary codes are really perfect for machines and computers to process. So here are how we represent each digit in a UPC barcode. So notice that there's different patterns for the left-hand side of the code versus the right-hand side of the code. This is meant to allow the scanner to read the barcode even if it's being, being held upside down. So if we look here, all of these left side digits, they all have an odd number of ones and an even number of zeros. So for example, digit four here has three ones and four zeros. Digit seven here has five ones and two zeros. And if you look at all of these on the left side, this has an even number of zeros, an odd number of ones. But if I look on the right-hand side of my code, all of these digits, so for example, if I look here, there's four ones and three zeros. If you look down here, there's two ones and five zeros. So there's an even number of ones and an odd number of zeros. So this is to allow the scanner to read the code upside down. So if it starts reading the code and it thinks it's looking from left to right, but it gets an even number of zeros, or sorry, an even number of ones and an odd number of zeros, it knows that the code is actually upside down. And so it'll take what it's reading and flip it internally. So that way, even if you're holding the object upside down, the machine can still read it and process and figure out how much that, you know, whatever you're buying costs and so on. All right, so we talked about this, right? So the odd number of ones and the even number of ones, depending on which side of the code you're on. Now, in addition, many grocery store scanners also have multiple beams of light that are shooting out at the object that you're scanning at different angles. So the, the goal here is so that it doesn't always work perfectly. Again, if you've done self-scanning at the grocery store, you know that sometimes you have to do this multiple times. But the goal is that the first time you slide that object across the scanner, 
the scanner is going to read the code no matter whether it's right side up or upside down or pointed at a weird angle. That's the goal. Again, we don't always accomplish that for various reasons, but uh, the machine is set up to try to allow that as much as possible. Okay, so now let's work through an example of actually interpreting a code by hand. Now, the code is very large, so I'm not going to go through all of this in full detail, but I'm going to do at least the first few digits so that you get the idea of how this works. Okay, so as we read this, the first thing we see is a dark bar, a light bar, and a dark bar, right? Remember, so the space we want to think of that as being a light bar. So this is our 101, which is our guard pattern, right? So that's just the thing that's always at the front and the end of every UPC code. And again, we see it again over here at the end, we see a 101 dark, light, dark. That pattern is always at the beginning and end of every bar, uh, of every UPC barcode. Next up, we see a wide white space. So this is some number of zeros, but it's not immediately obvious how many zeros that is, right? So it's, it's definitely more than a single zero because it, we can tell that it's a wide space, but how many zeros is it? Well, the way that we're going to figure that out is by also looking at what comes after the zeros. And what we can tell here is that this is some number of ones. Any dark pattern is going to be ones, but again, we know that this is not a single one because this thick black bar is thicker than the guard pattern. So one of the functions of the guard pattern at the beginning of the code is to tell the scanner how wide is a single bar. And so because we can tell that that bar is, has this amount of width, then this bar here is wider than that. So we've got some code where we have multiple zeros followed by multiple ones. So now we're looking over here. We know we're on the left side of our code and we know we have multiple zeros followed by multiple ones. So which digit is it? Well, it could be zero because that starts with three zeros and then two ones. It could be one because that's two zeros and two ones, but it can't be two because that's two zeros, but then only a single one. Three doesn't fit that pattern. Four doesn't, five doesn't, six doesn't, seven doesn't, eight doesn't, and nine doesn't. So even though we're not exactly sure how wide this pattern is, we can be pretty sure that we are, we're narrowing it down. We're narrowing down the possibilities. Okay, so is this a zero or is it a one? So we keep reading. So what comes after the ones? Well, after the ones, what we have is a single white space. And again, we can tell that it's a single space because we compare that to the single space that's in our guard pattern. And it's the same width. So if you can tell this space here is a single zero and this space here is a single zero and so now we know that our pattern is multiple zeros followed by multiple ones followed by a single zero and now we've narrowed it down this has to be the digit zero that's the only number that fits that pattern so three zeros two ones and the zero and a one so this is a zero all right so that's our first digit and notice that that's it's a bit of a process right so there's there's definitely some steps that we go through to figure out that our first digit of our code is a zero so that ended here. That ended with a one. And in fact, every single one of my digits on the left-hand side is gonna end with a one. So the very next space, which is gonna start with a zero, that's gonna be the beginning of my next digit. So now what I can tell is that my next digit starts with a single white space, a single zero. And then a big thick black bar. So I know that that's multiple ones. And now remember, I know now that this is two ones. That's a double wide bar. And this next bar that I see here, that's wider than that. So this is three or more ones. It's wider than the double wide that we already saw. So now we're looking for a digit that starts with a single zero and then has three or more ones. So again, we're gonna look in our chart and we're gonna see which digit fits that pattern. So it's not zero, it's not one, it's not two, it could be three, it's not four, it's not five, it's not six, it could be seven, it's not eight, it's not nine. All right, so remember what we saw is that it's a single zero followed by at least three ones. And again, there's only a couple of possibilities that fit that. Okay, so what do we have next? Well, after that, we've got another single space and then we've got multiple ones. So that looks like a double after that single space. So we have a single zero, a bunch of ones, a single zero, and then two ones. So which one of my digits fits that? Is it three or is it seven? It's not three because I only have a single one after that second space in my three, it's gotta be a seven. So my second digit of my code is a seven. 
So this is the process, right? And it's a little bit of a guesswork. It's a little bit of kind of narrowing things down, but this is the basic idea. Let's do one more using the right side. So right here is the middle of my code. And remember, the middle of my code is 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. So now what happens to the uh, right after that? Well, I've got a single space. I've got a bunch of ones. Now, if I compare that thick bar with this thick bar over here, remember, we know that that's three ones. This one looks about the same. So this is also going to be three ones. So we've got zero, one, 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 and then a wide white space. Maybe we're not exactly sure how many zeros that is, but it's some number of zeros. So now we're looking at the right side of our code because we're past the, the middle part. And so what, what are we looking for? We're looking for a single zero followed by triple one, followed by uh, two zeros or two or more zeros. Now remember this zero here, this zero right here, that's part of my guard pattern. Right, that's part of my zero one. That's this zero. So that's my zero one zero one zero. So the one one one. That's actually the beginning of my digit. So if I narrow that down, that's either going to be a zero, which starts with a triple one, or it's going to be a nine, which starts with a triple one. It can't be anything else. And then after that triple one, I've got more than one zero. This space right here, this space right here, is more than a single bar. So that eliminates nine. So this has to be a zero. So the next digit of my code after this middle guard pattern is a zero. So again, matching up what we found, we knew we had a zero at the beginning, then we had a seven, then we had a zero. So we didn't get all the digits, but again, take your time. If you wanna go back to the previous slide, pause the video, look at that chart, try to figure out what some of these digits are. Uh, like I said, it is quite a long process for us because as humans, we're bad at this sort of thing, but the computer can do this extremely quickly. So next time we're going to be talking about something called error correcting codes. And the, a feature that both these PostNet and these UPC codes is that errors can be not only detected, but in some cases they can actually be corrected. And again, this is important for that principle that we talked about where we don't want to have to have the customer at the store have to scan their object over and over and over again. And, and you know, that may happen, right? But we want to minimize that. We don't want to have every single time you have to scan everything five times because then people are going to get frustrated. The lines are going to get long, right? We want to make sure that we're trying to uh, correct as many errors as we possibly can, right? The barcode on the object could be damaged. The person could be holding it in a weird way. The lighting, there might be a shadow being cast by something that's causing the scanner not to read it properly. There's all those sorts of things that can go wrong. So we want to try to make our code be set up in a way so that we minimize those errors.